Hello, it's Pierre, and in this video, I want to share with you my web design process when working with clients. Now, the very first step is going to be a discovery phase, which usually is going to be a call with the client. And after a call, they are likely going to send you some documentation, which might be also very extensive. So using ChatGPT as an assistant to brainstorm and understand the high level picture is going to be really, really useful. And the uh, two prompts uh, which uh, I use, uh, for example, is uh, asking ChatGPT if uh, she can create uh, a summary of uh, a documentation, uh, extracting all the high level information. Now, of course, uh, I will go through the documentation extensively, but this is really helpful to kind of like note down uh, the highlights. And also another way that you can use ChatGPT is to essentially ask uh, for a list uh, of uh, sections and structures uh, around uh, um, a high level, uh, high converting, uh, website uh, landing page, for example, if that uh, is uh, your goal. And basically ChatGPT is going to give you a list uh, of uh, components, ideas that you can use based on the documentation uh, that uh, the client sent over. So this is going to be really helpful to brainstorm ideas. And then of course, you're going to have to make your own uh, judgments. You're going to have to tweak uh, uh, these ideas. It's not perfect, of course, and you, ha you know the strategy. Uh, better than ChatGPT does. So you always have to think with your own head. Uh, but uh, this is going to give you a really nice uh, high level structure for the very second part, which is going to be creating uh, the initial wireflow structure of the website. Now these days uh, I use uh, either FigGem or this tool, which is from uh, Rhythm Library, which is Rhythm AI, which essentially enables you to describe uh, a website in a few sentences. Um, and uh, essentially you can uh, create uh, a outline. Now I don't really use it this way. The way that I use it uh, is uh, to simply go <clears throat> directly on uh, uh, the sitemap uh, and then uh, I would uh, uh, literally like you know delete uh, the sections uh, and uh, do it manually based on uh, the outcome that uh, ChatGPT gave me because uh, for whatever reason uh, this approach works well if you're going like really broad uh, and then you can also create uh, wireframe uh, uh, ideas uh, but uh, when it comes to my personal process, I like to be more detailed uh, in uh, the flow. And uh, again, nothing wrong with uh, starting from here, but uh, I just found that uh, it's better for uh, other type of uh, projects than you know what I usually uh, like to approach and structure. But nonetheless, really useful to kind of have this uh, this high level um, high level sitemap. And then once the high level sitemap uh, is approved by the client, you can then go on uh, and uh, work on the wireframes, which I usually use uh, uh, again from Rhythm, uh, this, Figma file right here, which uh, enables you to basically have uh, the entire Rhythm uh, library, which is uh, this component section uh, that uh, you can find on their official website. And uh, you can essentially uh, browse through, you know, for example, nav bars. Uh, you can literally copy uh, all of these, nar all of these uh, nav bars uh, which are available in the Figma file. So everything that you see here, it's in the Figma file. It's 100% uh, free, which is awesome and uh, really a great gift uh, for the community. And uh, I just keep it high level, so I don't do any design whatsoever when it comes uh, to this stage. I just want to focus on uh, the bare bones uh, wireframe uh, ideas uh, and uh, have uh, a conversation with the client, maybe send them a Loom video uh, analyzing the idea. And then once uh, we agree upon uh, the wireframe, that's where I would uh, then jump into Figma and actually work uh, on uh, the designs and maybe coming up with a couple of proposals for the design direction. And then once agreed upon, <clears throat> we're going to work on uh, the rest of the site. Now, after that, uh, of course, uh, 
were implementing uh, the Figma website into Webflow, which is my tool of choice. I also tried Framer, definitely a, a great tool for some specific scenarios, but at this point in time, Webflow is just uh, a better solution for larger scale projects or even projects that uh, you probably want to expand in the future with you know more advanced uh, functionalities. So Framer is awesome. I'm sure that they're going to catch up uh, and uh, there's so much on the roadmap, which uh, really makes it uh, um, a tool that you have to uh, continue to check upon. But at, the, at this moment in time, using Webflow and uh, again, with uh, the Rhythm Components uh, library. So there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of uh, similarities between uh, the designs that come up to the original uh, Rhythm Components, uh, or you can simply find components which are similar to what you're trying to achieve. So this is going to help you not only speed up the work, but also laying a nice foundation, which is structurally really well done because these, uh, uh, these components are created by professionals. So even if you're not a front-end developer, you can leverage the structure that professionals have already um, laid out for you. I usually use it with uh, the client first uh, um, by FinSuite. So that's my preference uh, when it comes to the style sheet and or style uh, in class uh, structure. And uh, after that, uh, it's mainly uh, working directly on, on the Webflow website. <clears throat> Sometimes if I need uh, some fancy components, which I can find over here, I might jump into Flowbase and consider uh, their components since uh, these are more um, styled, uh, if you wish. There are also pros and cons of doing this approach and we always want to be cautious as to mixing class libraries together. So you will need to clean up and uh, do some extra work on top in order to be sure that uh, the Webflow site uh, is uh, well structured and you know all the classes and naming conventions are, are good and, and work cohesively with each other. You get the point, right? And uh, after that, uh, I would share the initial uh, website uh, or the initial page with uh, the client. And uh, until some time, uh, uh, not, not recently, I would use uh, markup.io in order to manage the comments. It's still a great uh, solution. But nowadays, uh, Webflow have uh, integrated comments uh, within uh, their ecosystem. So we just use uh, Webflow comments or good old uh, uh, comments uh, in uh, you know via email maybe loom videos with, with some clients uh, it's um, you you got to be flexible but uh, uh, anyways the the core element is to keep everything organized and uh, usually in webflow comments uh, that is uh, the way to go and then at the end uh, have a entire checklist uh, before i push the site live uh, and uh, some of the extracts from the from the checklist uh, is uh, you gotta check that the website is, is responsive so you might want to use uh, a tool like this one here responsive uh, design checker.com there's a bunch of more websites to to do so and you can always use uh, uh, your devices in order to check uh, for the responsiveness uh, directly uh, also be sure that the website is loading uh, fast, so images that aren't too big, uh, optimized, uh, and then um, you know all, all of the other elements which uh, I'm probably going to create a video about in order to optimize the, the site speed uh, for SEO and performance uh, overall. And then uh, my trials like another one for, such as Pingdom for uh, just giving it an extra layer. So I hope this video was helpful. If uh, you have uh, any questions about this workflow or you have uh, any questions about uh, something related to Webflow design, uh, I'm a designer with 10 years of experience. So feel free to ask them in the comments and uh, I'll uh, try to help you out. See you in the next one.